There's a small thing about Bullseye that's bothering me, and it's something you might have noticed too. Basically, the game resets the next round sooner than you might expect. Remember there's a button in the app that says Hit Me, and when you tap the button it shows your current score. You'd expect that when you tap the awesome button, the game then advances to the next round. But actually, that's not what happens. The game actually advances to the next round as soon as the pop-up appears. It's a little bit confusing to see the round increase, a new random value appear, and the slider get reset before you've even had a chance to read your score. In this exercise, you'll fix this, and you'll learn about an important Swift concept called closures along the way. First, let's review the problem. If I tap the Hit Me button, notice that the round immediately increases to round two. But I still think of myself as round one before I click Awesome, and also it's already moved to a new random value. So watch it closely again. It's round two, I click Hit Me, and it's already moved to round three, score's already increased, and so on. Let's review why this is happening. If I take a look at Show Alert, notice how I first call Present, and second, I call Start New Round. So first you might wonder, why isn't this working? We're calling these in the appropriate order. However, contrary to what you might expect, Present does not hold up execution until the alert pop-up is dismissed. That's how alerts may work on some other platforms, but not on iOS. Instead, when you call present, iOS puts the alert up on the screen and immediately returns right here. So the user has not clicked the button yet. The rest of the show alert method is executed right away. So we call this method to start the new round. In programmer speak, alerts are working asynchronously. We'll talk more about what that means in a later section of this course. But for right now, all you need to know is that you don't know in advance when the alert will be done but it will definitely be after show alert is finished. So how do you know when the user taps the button and closes the alert? Well, the answer is simple, events. As you've learned in this course, a lot of programming for iOS involves waiting for certain events to occur, like buttons being tapped, we call show alert, or sliders being moved, we call sliders moved, and so on. So we just need to wait for the appropriate event when the user taps the button, and in the meantime, we do nothing. Here's how this works. For each button on the alert, we have to supply a UI alert action object. This object tells the alert what the text on the button is and what the button looks like. We're using the default style here. And finally, there's this handler. And this tells the alert what should happen when the button is pressed. This is the alert dismissed event that we've been looking for. Now, currently we've set this to nil, which means nothing happens. So to change this, we need to give the UI alert action some code to execute when this button is tapped. And when the user finally taps awesome, the alert will remove itself from the screen and jump to our code. That's our cue to take it from there. This is also known as the callback pattern. And there are several ways this pattern manifests on iOS. Often you'll be asked to create a new method to handle this event, but here you'll be using something new, a swift closure. So the way it works is I'm gonna delete nil here and add two curly braces. And this is the closure where we put code to execute. The first thing we have to put is action in. So closures can take parameters. So the parameter that we receive here is the handle to the action itself in case we need to do anything with it. We don't in this case, but we still need to type action in to start. And then after this, you put whatever code you want to execute. And we're going to type self.startNewRound to start a new round of the game. And then that's it. Again, this block of code is called a swift closure. And you can think of this as a method without a name. So this code is not executed right away. Rather, it's stored somewhere and only performed when the awesome button is tapped. You'll be writing a lot of these closures in your app, especially when you have a block of code that's executed at some point in the future upon a certain event occurring. Okay, there's one last thing. Now that we're calling start new round, when the awesome button is tapped, we don't need to add it at the end of this method. So I'm just going to delete it from down here. That's it. Now I'm going to build and run. Now watch carefully what happens. The round is one, the random value is 45. If I tap hit me, it still stays the same until I tap awesome, in which case it advances to the next round. Great. 